After my recent video about the new NAVVAC expander, the battery powered expander, you guys had some requests. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to explain a couple things and we're actually going to swage inch and one eighth, three eighths, and three quarter copper. I'm going to do that so I can show how much of a bell end this tool puts on the copper. We're going to measure and compare some standard fittings with the bell ends that we make with the tool. And I want to note before we start, some of you had commented about the grease that came out the first time I used the tool. Now what I've noticed, and I'm going to hold up one of the expander heads, as you can see there is grease in the end of that tool. I think when you first use these tools, you actually expel some of that grease and after the first few usages, you'll see that problem dissipate. That's just my assumption. As we continue to use the tool, we can confirm that, but I wanted to address that so you guys knew. So first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and swage all three of these pipes and then we can start making our comparisons. On the first run with the 3 8 I did crack the piping, so I'm going to try that again. I do want to note that initially I spread the 3 8 pipe by latching it here and opening it up with one run and then fitting it over the entire tool with the second run. This time I am not doing that because I think that contributed to the fact that it split. You can see it takes it to the limit. And there's a couple spots that if it pressed farther, it may split, but it did not split. And I believe it's because I changed my technique. This is the end of the three quarters. I have this piece of inch and one eighth copper. I'm having a hard time getting the expander to fit into this piece. It's just a little bit tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it out with the one inch expansion head and then switch to the inch and one eighth. Hopefully that does the trick. Looks like it did. I'm going to go ahead and use the inch and one eighth. And there we go. I have this fitting right here, which is a reducing coupling, which I believe goes from 7 8 to inch and 1 8. We can see that our inch and 1 8 pipe does fit inside of it. I'm going to measure the outer diameter and inner diameter of this fitting. The outer diameter is 30.94 millimeters. The outer diameter of the piece we created with our swager is 31 millimeters. The interior diameter of the coupling is 28.64 millimeters. The interior diameter of the bell end of our swage is 28.72 millimeters. The depth of the bell of the factory coupling is roughly 24.59 millimeters. The depth of the bell of the coupling we created is 16.48 millimeters. The coupling that we swage together does fit together well. There's very little play. There's actually almost no play at all. The three quarter coupling on the OD is 20.64. The OD of our swage coupling is 20.77. The ID of our swage coupling is 19.26. The ID of our factory coupling is 19.12. The depth of our bell end we created with the swager on the three quarter is 15.72. The three quarters fits together a little bit looser than an inch and one eighth. There is less play than with the three eighths, but more so than with the inch and one eighth. The OD on our three eighth swage that we made with the swager is 11.05. The factory elbow is 11.02. The ID on the factory elbow is 9.52. The ID on our swaged end of three eighths is 9.83. The 3 8 fits together not quite as well as the inch and 1 8 There's a slight bit of play. The bell end of the 3 8 copper is roughly 7.03 millimeters. 
I hope that answers most of your questions about this tool. I think it's a great tool. I think there's definitely advantages and disadvantages to every type of tool that you use. And of course, there's going to be some advantages and disadvantages to this tool. For example, you can't do a partial swage very easily. Once you hit the button on this one, it's going to perform the full swage. So that's one difference between this tool and some of the other tools. This one's going to cause a lot less strain overall because you just hit the button and it does the swage. But as we continue to use this tool, I think that we're going to find out more about it and find out uh, who this tool is right for, which one of you guys would get the most use out of it as far as which parts of the HVAC field. I think it's a pretty good tool. It seems like it's relatively, I'm not going to say inexpensive, but inexpensive compared to where stuff like this normally falls. So you can judge that for yourself, guys and gals out there. If you used one already, make sure to put down in the comments how you like it, what do you think the advantages are, disadvantages, and all that good stuff. If you want me to test anything else about this tool or any other tool, let me know in the comments or shoot me an email at hvacshoptalk at gmail.com. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.